I want to start by just making sure everybody knows that today a lot of things went right. And this is, in fact, why we test. Um, so we did have, obviously, some challenges today. Uh, when, the, when the spacecraft separated from the launch vehicle, um, we did not get the orbital insertion burn that we were hoping for. It uh, appears as though the mission elapsed timing system um, had an error in it. Um, and that anomaly resulted in the vehicle believing that the time was different than it actually was. And because that timing was a little bit off, um, what ended up happening is uh, the, the, the spacecraft tried to maintain a very precise uh, control that it normally wouldn't have tried to maintain. And it burned a lot of, a, a lot of prop in that, in that part of the, uh, the flight. And when that prop got burnt, uh, it looked like we weren't going to be able to, to, to go ahead and, and rendezvous with the International Space Station. By the time we were able to get signals up uh, to, to actually command it to do the orbital insertion burn, it was a bit too late. And the reason it was too late is because it, it appears, and remember, all of this is very early and preliminary, and we're learning things moment by moment, but it appears as though um, we were between uh, TDRS communication satellites, which meant we couldn't get uh, the command signal to, to, tell the to tell the spacecraft that it needed to do the orbital insertion burn soon enough. That had we had Nicole Mann in the spacecraft, um, remember what the, the challenge here, this anomaly has to do with automation. And Nicole and Mike are trained specifically to deal with the, the situation that happened today where the automation was not working according to plan. And if, if, if we would have had crew in there, number one, they would have been safe. To be very clear, our crew would have been safe. And in fact, had they been in there, we very well may be orbiting, or we, we may be docking with the International Space Station tomorrow, had they been in the spacecraft. Let me jump right to what, we, what, what the timeline was. As soon as the spacecraft separates from the launch vehicle, the, it's programmed to do an orbital insertion burn, which is how you go catch the space station and rendezvous. That burn didn't happen. It appears that the vehicle was using a mission elapsed timer that was not the mission elapsed timer the mission was on. We don't understand the root cause of that. We don't know if that was inherent somewhere in the vehicle or was caused by some event. But just haven't got, you know, what we know is we were, the vehicle was not on the right timer. We don't know why it thought that, was, that it wasn't. The thing to know is, of course, once the vehicle thought it was at a different time in the mission, being autonomous, a lot of this runs on a timer, it began to do burns and attitude control. The flight control team reacted in a very professional manner. They recognized and the engineers diagnosed this quickly. We began to send commands to take it over. As Administrator Bridenstine mentioned, there was a, some delay in that until we could get a positive link as we went through satellites. Again, that's our hypothesis. That's why the link wasn't received, but we've got data to review there. And so the flight control team put the spacecraft in uh, safe orbit. We're, we're tailed to the sun, making sure we maximize charging. All systems are good, cooling, power. Uh, they're, in addition to the flight dynamics, we're also able to do far field sensor looks and space to space checkouts of our optical system. So all of that is underway. The orbit we're in today, the reason we picked it and put it there is that that allows us to return to White Sands in 48 hours. So <clears throat> without knowing exactly what was going on, the team quite rightly said, let me, let me put the spacecraft in an orbit that I know I can control and get home and give the engineering team time to thoroughly figure out what's going on. So spacecraft looks healthy. We're in an orbit we like. It is. By the way, that was, that was the absolute right decision uh, for, uh, for this mission, to make a decision that we needed to come home and make sure we can land at White Sands. That is an important test objective in itself. Safety first, you want to make sure you, you go up, you go to space, and you come home where you intended to go. So I commend the flight control team and the, the combined Boeing NASA team that called that very early. Uh, where we sit now in the orbit, we're doing a propellant inventory management. It appears we have about 75% of the, the flight test propellant available. Uh, and the team will go figure out what subset of our overall test objectives can be achieved with the propellant remaining while preserving a safe return to White Sands.